and good day everyone we will go on to talk about oxygen therapy devices tips so it's a very important topic actually and we should all know that oxygen is a drug and it should be prescribed like that you should not prescribe to staff that okay give oxygen you should tell that you should want to give the oxygen in a prescribed device in a prescribed dosage this is what is the message that i am going to give you today so today this is the institute mahatma gandhi medical college currently our professor dr ravishankar is the director of seed rings so what is oxygen therapy is the administration of oxygen at concentrations greater than ambient air 21% is the normal atmospheric oxygen if you want to give more than that then it is what is called oxygen therapy an administration of oxygen at concentrations greater than 21% why we want to correct or prevent hypoxemia oxy plus gene well, how was it actually came this name it is the genesis of an acid oxy means acid gene means genesis so whenever we take in this gas the acid was produced that is carbon dioxide that is why priestly called it as oxygen so when to give oxygen where can we diagnose hypoxia when the pao2 is less than 60 mm or oxygen saturation is less than 90% this is what is called hypoxemia in infants it may be slightly different or when we think it is reasonable to administer yes saturation is 91 but i think that it is reasonable to administer now get the saturation up to 95 or 96 to decrease the work of breathing or decrease the respiratory distress whatever you think is the reasonable reason to administer hypoxia in the post anesthesia period supplemental oxygen is to be administered to all patients during emergence to prevent tissue hypoxia okay we can give for some time a few 10 minutes or something like that but some factors favor prolonged therapy what are these factors which favor prolonged oxygen therapy in patients who have undergone general anesthesia these are the pathophysiological factors hypovolemia hypotension anemia cardiorespiratory distress shivering analgesia factors iv opioid infusions surgical factors upper abdomen all these things yes we have to keep in our mind we need supplemental oxygen for an extended period of time regarding oxygen therapy everyone is no hypoxic hypoxia cytotoxic hypoxia all these things four types of hypoxia in hypoxic hypoxia it is very useful in cytotoxic hypoxia it is not at all useful in the intermediate periods anemic or stagnant it may be useful so what we are targeting oxygen therapy is only about hypoxic hypoxia what are the clinical clues okay now i am going to give hypox oxygen i am going to diagnose hypoxemia what are the clinical clues Maybe lung tachypnea and dyspnea, tachycardia, hypertension, arrhythmias, palpitation, hematology, anemia, CVS, CNS, restlessness, disorientation. Even it may be nausea, vomiting. What we commonly see in hypotension, hypoxia in spinal. So what is the inference from this? We are clueless. Anything can be an indication of hypoxemia. Why this important is? a normoxic breathless patient may not benefit oxygen is 100% but the patient is slightly breathless we don't know the cause yes it is not of much benefit why to give relieve hypoxemia prevent hypoxemia this is what we told first why is the administration relieve or treat prevent it also uses to reduce the work of breathing reduce you can see patient is around 30 per minute start oxygen the, the respiratory rate comes down to 24 or 25 this is common improves exercise tolerance yes it is for us to see that the right patient receives the right amount of oxygen for the right length of time 
Now we know 1000 ml is supply, 250 ml is consumed, 750 ml is returned, and it says SVO2 is 75%. Oxygen flux is cardiac output into 1.34 into hemoglobin into saturation. How much oxygen is going out of the heart? That is cardiac output into 1.3. See here the importance of oxygen saturation. It is very important. Now is that's a God skipped. At 60 millimeters of mercury, we get 90% saturation. And after that, if you go to 80 only, it is 93 only. That is why in oxygen flux, the saturation becomes very important. That's God skipped. Now we can see this is the deoxy and oxyhemoglobin, how this hemoglobin is attached and a positive chronotrope as this uh, cooperative effect, which I will describe it in a different slide, different video of oxygen dissociation curve. What are we doing? Yes, we know 21% of oxygen, atmospheric air, 21% of oxygen oft of 750, 760 millimeters. And then our barometric pressure is 760 millimeters. 21% of 760 is 160. This is what is there. It comes down humidified, then end expiratory gas, ideal alveolar gas comes into mitochondria. If it is less than 2, 3 or 4, then we go into so-called posture point. The mitochondria goes to anaerobic metabolism. Now, what are we doing is, now we, for example, a patient with pneumonia. Patient is hypoxic. We are not concentrating on whether the patient has this gray hepatization, red hepatization of pneumonia. We are not going to correct within these things. What we are doing is we are increasing this from 160 to 360 so that we get the effect here. We cannot change or modify your pneumonia consolidation at all immediately. But what we are doing is here and get the effect here. No arterial hypoxemia, but tissue hypoxemia can happen in all these things. That is why they are of some use in these patients. What is FDO2 and what is F5? It's all very difficult, it seems, but it is very simple. FDO2, the delivery, actual percentage delivered oxygen by the delivery device. F5O2 is a fractional, yes. The device may give 100% oxygen. For example, if you give a nasal prongs, from that nasal prongs, what is coming? 100% oxygen is coming. So, the delivery of the oxygen is 100% only. But the patient may breathe only 24%. If you put a nasal prongs here, the FiO2 may increase from 21 to 25 only. That is what is very important. So, in simple words, the device may give 100%, but the patient may breathe only 24%. What are the reasons for it? Device, oxygen flow, patient's efforts and flow, minute ventilation, mouth breathers. For example, if you are giving through the nose and patient is breathing through the mouth, what oxygen you will get? Nothing. So we calculate and give whether whether it is correct or not is a question because all these reasons actually influence your FiO2 whatever be your FTO2. Now, how do we classify oxygen delivery devices? Low flow systems, reservoir systems, high flow systems, and enclosure systems. These are more important in a scientific or a conceptual manner to understand the oxygen therapy, variable performance, and fixed performance. What do we mean by variable performance devices? The performance varies with the patient's flow rate. For example, nasal catheter, cannula, simple oxygen mask. Now you are being nasal catheters, 4 liters per minute. If my flow rate is 5 liters per minute, your flow 4 liters of nasal oxygen will be catering to almost 30, 20, 28 to 30 percent. But if my flow rate increases, <laughs> I become dysnic like this then your nasal catheter of flow rate may not give your so-called fixed output. 24%, 3 liters, 24%, 5 liters, 28%. All these things will be invalid if your patient's flow rate is increasing. That is why it is called variable performance device. 
the performance of the device. For example, if you give 2 liters, the FiO2 will be 24%. If you give 4 liters, the FiO2 is 26%. This performance will not be there and it will vary according to the patient's flow rate. This is called variable performance devices or low flow systems. Fixed performance devices. For example, you give a Venturi mask. The Venturi mask will take up oxygen and also take up air. And the flow rate may be 15-20 liters. It will give 15-20 liters. So even if you breathe a high flow rate of 15 liters, the oxygen will be supplied to it and the FiO2 may not change. So if you are keeping 8 liters, 40% oxygen, the Venturi mask, and it will give another 15 liters and it will be 22 liters or 23 liters. So the fixed FiO2 of 36% or 40% may not change. That is what is called the fixed performance device. Flow is, because high flow is there. That is why you are matching the flow rate of the patient. So fixed performance device is Venturi. Variable performance device is your nasal mask or your prongs. Because the performance of the device differs with your inspiratory flow rates. Both systems can deliver a wide range of FIO2. Low flow systems, low FIO2, nothing like that. Do not confuse low flow and high flow with low FIO2 and high FIO2. Even if you keep, for example, a variable performance device of nasal cannula and give 10 liters, it will try to give a 35% or something like that, high flow. And the, even if it is a low flow system, for example, variable performance device, it can give high effort. With the Venturi, you can give 26%. So, performance device is different from FIO2. A fixed performance device like Venturi can also give 28%, while a variable performance device like a normal face mask, Hudson mask, can also give 40%. So, fixed performance, variable performance, differing FIO2s can be given. These two things don't match. Now, we will go to some examples of devices. This is a nasal cannula. You see 1 liter 0.24. This is what I am telling. With 6 liters, you can try up to 40% FIO2. So, it's a variable performance. Simple, well tolerated, non claustrophobic, available for infants. Feeding is possible. Mobility is possible. Humidification is not required because it uses the natural humidification of the nose. Well, whether we, when we are breathing through the nose, humidification is not needed. That is one of the best advantage of your nasal cannulas. It's a variable performance device. For example, this 2 liters, 28% will be there only if the patient's flow rate like this. If the patient's flow rate like this, this will not be there. That is why it is called variable performance. Slowly tie the knot here. This is very important. This is a very critical step in the because oxygen would have, then the patient will start paying for this. If you have a nasal catheter, gagging, positioning, high flows is possible. No reservoir. There is a some reservoir is here. So, this is a nasal catheter. There is a some reservoir. You should not use suction catheters. They may cause injuries. These are some of the things. The mustache reservoirs, pendant reservoirs, they may give 10 pml or 60 ml reservoirs. If these reservoirs are there, then it will slowly move towards fixed performance. That is what we should understand. There is a some reservoir. You are giving nasal pumps. There is a reservoir. If the flow rate increases, he will not directly inhale from the atmosphere. He will also inhale from the reservoir. That is why it may try to go towards from variable to fixed performance device. Use nasal cannula in conjunction with air-driven nebulizers to deliver food required nebulized drugs and oxygen therapy. You should not use oxygen as a nebulizing solution. The power, use always motor power and then supplement. This is what is commonly do, done mistake. Oxygen source money, nebulizer connect. 
that is not to be used. Transtracheal catheters, this is an inhospital sterile percutaneous thing and they can go home, no nasal irritation. If they want long-term oxygen therapy, yes, home oxygen. This we will not know what is this Bluetooth or oxygen. Yes, this oxygen is possible. A simple oxygen mask. This is what we have. It's a plastic reservoir, a small reservoir. Is there, designed to fit internal capacities the reservoir. The internal capacity may be hardly 10 to 20 ml maximum. Holes on each side. There is a hole on each side. Serves as both as exhalation ports and room air entrainment ports. If we are giving 5 liters per minute to the oxygen mask. If you are breathing at 18 liters, this as if this hole is likely to entrain room air. It also will exhale. This is a variable performance device. Room air inhale penny, so the FIO2 will decrease and your flow rate will defer the change or the FIO2 of the patients. But it is short periods is okay. Humidification is not needed. But you need to have high flows. It's a partial rebreathing mask. Now your oxygen is coming here and you are breathing in, and your oxygen is there and also from the reservoir. It exhales the first third of exhalation space, and high FIO2 is possible. Child adult is possible, but we cannot keep it for long duration and we cannot keep it for to eat. This may give up to 60 to 70 percent partial rebreathing mask. Now I am going to the most important step of non-rebreathing. The same as the partial rebreathing. There are two valves here. One side. You have to breathe from here only. You have to breathe from the reservoir back. This is not allowed here. You have to fix it tight. Your inhalation port correct. This is not an inhalation port. There is a valve. So this valve does only this and to prevent Whatever is there, it will only allow exhalation. So 100% non-rebreathing mask, 100% FIO2 is possible if you have a good airtight mask and a good flow and reservoir is proof. This is not very costly. You can see non-rebreathing mask. It is only 1,300 and it comes now, it comes to very less than that. High flow aerosol. Oxygen is forced through a jet orifice. It entrains both air, gets humidified from a bottle of water, and there is a Briggs adapter. So, this is what is called the oxygen aerosol nebulizer jet orifice. This is not commonly used. So, we will go to high flow systems. Now, we have seen nasal wrongs with reservoirs, without reservoirs. Normal Hudson mask. These are all low flow systems. This is a misnomer. It's all variable performance devices. Performance differs with flow rate of the patient. Now we go to high flow systems or air entrainment masks. FIO2 of 0.24 to 0.6 is possible. Now we are giving oxygen, air gets entrained, and this is there. Now, actually, what we have to do is we have to give it small orgated tube here so that the patient here there is a noise here if you keep it like this the noise will cause disturbance to the patient so we need to have a small reservoir like this so this gives a total flow maybe up to some 30 40 liters so your so-called high flow rate will be matched by this so the fio2 now you give this is some fio2 this is color coded you'll give this this will give a FIO2 of 30% or 32%, whatever be the inspiratory flow rate. High flows, patients' inspiratory flow is matched. FIO2 is controlled. Fixed FIO2. Very ideal for dyspnea and discomfort. Distress to patients. Uncomfortable for extensive period. We cannot measure FIO2. So there may be a problem here, obstruction because of the secretion, or there may be a problem here, obstruction because of the secretion. That is what we need to monitor. Sometimes we keep 40% oxygen. When you read device, the patient after some time will slowly deteriorate. So that may be because of your secretion here 
obstructing here or your secretion obstructing here. Beware of secretions. The calculation of our oxygen devices, the equation can be adjusted to find any unknown values. Okay. Now there is something called a gin, gas injection nebulizer. Pneumatic nebulizer, no entrainment, two flows, FiO2 of 1 is possible, up to 40 liters is possible. FiO2 1, 40 liters. So it's a fixed performance device. It's a pneumatic, no entrainment. There are two flows. So it's also available. Gin, $200 means it is around, how much is the cost? So less 15,000. It is available. 100% oxygen is possible and 40 liters of flow rate is possible. This is what is called the pulse demand oxygen delivery. When we inhale, the valve will open and will give oxygen. For example, in mountaineering, you don't need to waste gas. Inhale per mother, the oxygen will go in. And then after, during exhalation, the oxygen will not go. There is a valve. This is what is called pulse demand oxygen delivery. Oxygen hoots. Transparent enclosures designed to surround the head of the infant. A minimum flow is 6 to 7 liters is necessary because I have seen so many people a big hood and a 2 liter oxygen. Yes, it is absolutely waste. You have to fill up this scale at least some sort because here there will be leak. There will be leak here. Nothing will go to the patient. Oxygen tents are electrically powered appliances that incorporate an air circulation system. This is not commonly used because of the fire hazard. What are the dangers of oxygen therapy? Before going into the possible hazards, danger of oxygen therapy, many patients have died because of hypoxia rather than because of hyperoxia. This should go into our mind because people is rare to die of hyperoxygen therapy and all these things. They die commonly due to hypoxia. Physiological, beware, preterm infants, and retinopathies and pulmonary fibrosis of paraquat poisonings may cause carbon dioxide narcosis in COPDs. Inappropriate therapy of hypoxia, IR hypoxia. High of 502 may cause lung damage. And this is about physiological. Physically, an oxygen delivery device can malfunction. An oxygen delivery device can break, can cause injury, can cause injury to the lips can cause injury to the nasal pharynx if you put a nasal catheter. Fire hazards is increased with oxygen therapy. Bacterial contamination is associated with humidification systems. Sometimes water in the humidifier may be there for years, we have seen. Dry gases may cause airway irritations. But if we use the natural process of humidification, or we are giving through the nose and the mouth, mostly humidification is not needed. We have enough oxygen, but we need to have all these things to open the cylinders. Otherwise, we have to have this machine, oxygen concentrator, for which we may need to have an uninterrupted power supply. Factors that determine which system to start. Okay, now we have given so many systems. What to start and how to normalize or stabilize. We have to see patient is comfortable, distressed. What is the level of FIO? Do we need humidification? Nebulization? All these things we need to see before starting the oxygen therapy device. Oxygen cannot travel in wet secretions. This is very difficult, important to understand. Now we will go to the case scenarios to understand how to give oxygen. A case of acute asthma comes with respiratory distress. Now there is a respiratory distress. The flow rate is high. We need something to give fixed performance. Yes, this is what we should have in the mind. These patients are hypoxic and have rapid respiratory needs. If there is no CO2 retention, venturi mask with humidification or aerosol nebulizer start at 0.4 to 0.5. Dry gases can be irritant to increase mass. This is what we should understand. Start with venturi mask 0.4. Beware whether it is humidified or not. This is a patient of acute asthma with respiratory distress. A case of pneumothorax with respiratory distress, where we need to give 100% oxygen. If there is respiratory distress, 100% oxygen. Give gin 
or if there is no distress, give NRBM, non-rebreathing mask, 100%. Without much distress, NRBM, with much distress, gin. And there is no prolongation of putting a hole and do an ICD. Till then, you do this. A routine post-operative laparotomy patient. These patients need supplemental oxygen through a venturi mask or a nasal cap. FiO2.3 is enough. Sometimes if there is a distress, for example, a laparotomy, and we have not catered in too much of pain relief because we cannot top up an epidural because patient is sick or sometimes on noradrenaline. So we have not completely de-affronted the post-operative laparotomy for pain relief, then the flow rate may be high. If you are completely deafferentated, the patient is breathing normally, doing exercise, then maybe you need to give only nasal prongs. But if the patient's flow rate is high, we may need venturi mask. A routine infarct. If there is no pulmonary demand distress, a nasal cannula 0.3, they shall not drink or coughing and drinking. And there are some studies which they say it's not much useful like. A case of facio maxillary trauma with hypoxemia. A partial rebreathing may be useful. Nasal cannula catheter contraindicated. An infant with a croup where we need humidification. Because croup, like we need water to be in. COPD patient and FIO2. The patient's conscious status deteriorated. ABD, PAO2, and PACO2 of 75. So we don't need PAO2 of 80 now. We come down to. 0.4 to 0.3 and the PO2 to 70. Let there be some hypoxic drive and your PCO2 may come down. Or otherwise, we may go to NIV or something like that. So don't keep the FIO2 high to maintain a PO2 of 80 in patients with COPD where they are likely to retain carbon dioxide and go into narcosis. Supplemental oxygen may not correct all hypoxemia. This is what is important. We may need to give mechanical ventilation, we may need to give CPAP, we may need to give bleds or fluids or as appropriate. Some patients may help themselves like this. Oxygen is a drug. Don't stay, stop, give oxygen. Continuous humidified venturi 40%, 8 liters. Nasal prongs unhumidified 2 liters. Something like that you should try to the case sheet. It is a drug. Thank you all. All slides are available in www.painfreepartha.com